Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. Hello, and welcome to episode 15 of Non-Monogamy Help. I'm Lola Phoenix. Um, Non-Monogamy Help is a relationship relationships advice podcast and column for people in non-monogamous polyamorous and open relationships that comes out every week columns come out on alternate weeks as a podcast you can send your letters to nonmonogamyhelp at gmail.com and they'll be either in the podcast or the column anonymously you can specify which if you really want to you can read the column and get the podcast episodes at medium.com forward slash non hyphen monogamy hyphen help you can subscribe to our newsletter and get them in your inbox at tinyletter.com forward slash nonmonogamy non-monogamy help you can also become a patron and be super amazing and support the podcast with um just a dollar a month is awesome and if you support it for five dollars a month then your name gets right on the podcast and if you would like it to be you go to patreon.com forward slash lola phoenix and you can also follow us on twitter at twitter.com forward slash non-monogamy help so let's get started with um this week's episode Just as a note for this letter, um, I think that the person who sent it, English is their second language, so that might be why there are a little bit grammatical inconsistencies. I am a 30 years old girl in a relationship with a guy since six years. In brief, from the very beginning, I told him I want an open relationship, and he did not take this need seriously. I have proposed... I've proposed to him to have a threesome, to have other partners, to go to nightclubs, but he cannot stand um, with all these things. He conceives these kink opportunities only with his friends and not with, quote unquote, the woman he loves. Only after six months, he asked me to be monogamous. I did my best while trying to make him pro-polyamory, but two years ago, I cheated on him and he discovered my wild affair. This destroyed him emotionally and he lost his trust on me. Now two years have passed, we are fine, and he knows that I need to have some sexual space outside him. So f- so far, I have never met someone who fascinates me but soon I will get a tattoo on my thigh and I've realized that the tattooer really makes me horny so that's my question what is the best way to tell my boyfriend I want to have sex with the tattooer so there are a few things here like I really really hate it when my best advice in a situation is breaking up but honestly this in this situation I kind of feel like you're very incompatible and you kind of knew you were incompatible from the beginning I'm not really sure why you've continued to be in this relationship for six years from the beginning you've told him that you're non-monogamous and that's what you want and he doesn't want that you know you've tried for six years to make you know get him to be interested in some form of non-monogamy whether that be you know doing things with you in a threesome way which some monogamous people even though they are monogamous are still open to you've tried it sounds like you've tried a variety of things and he's still not into it and then you've also cheated and that really really upset him and really really hurt him i don't know why you're still with him you might be quote-unquote fine right now but you're basically not fine because you're not getting what it is that you want out of the relationship and i really don't think there is a best way to tell your boyfriend that you want to sleep with the the person who's going to tattoo you i think that the honestly and i really i really really don't like this being my advice because i feel like it it's such a hard decision you know it is it is a kind of last resort decision sometimes for some people you want to do your best to salvage the relationship that you have and i totally understand that but i really really feel like you've put 6 years into this relationship you've both been together for 6 years and you clearly have a base level incompatibility i totally understand that you might have very strong feelings for one another you may love him very very much but you're at a base level incompatible and there are certain incompatibilities that can be worked around you know there are certain things that you can disagree on and you can meet in the middle or you can give a little get a little but this is the kind of thing where it just doesn't seem like there is any compromise to be had I said the only thing that I could maybe suggest and I I really really would advise you do this with the help of a polyamory friendly therapist is maybe considering if he would be open to allowing you to have some exploration with other people 
in a don't ask, don't tell situation. I know that a lot of people don't like don't ask, don't tell. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with don't ask, don't tell, it kind of is basically where you can do what you'd like and he doesn't know about it, but he's fine with it because he's kind of agreed with it beforehand. So it's not cheating because he has agreed with it, but he doesn't want to know any of the details. And maybe like for one night a week, you know, he knows you're out and that's all he knows. I, I That is a situation that does and can work for some people. Usually I would suggest or think about that kind of situation for people who've been married for decades, who have children, who have lives tied together. That would be very, very difficult to untangle and for all intents and purposes have a fantastic stable relationship outside of it. But I just feel like, you know, you're 30, you've been with him for six years. I don't know how old he is. But, like, why waste your time? I just feel like him, you know, the, the sacrifice he's going to make by agreeing to a don't ask, don't tell type of situation might potentially be really hurtful for him. Like, you, when you did cheat on him in the past, you said it destroyed him emotionally. Like, if he is at a base level monogamous, why continue this? Why continue torturing both yourself and him by being together when it you're just at a base level not compatible? Wanting and not wanting to have kids is another one of those things that's just not compromisable. You know, I would really not suggest someone who really doesn't want kids to compromise by having a kid because it's yeah, I wouldn't suggest that. And this is the kind of same situation. You know, if he wasn't emotionally devastated by you cheating on him, if he kind of was able to cope with it better and, and could maybe not necessarily come around to being polyamorous himself, but still be okay with you doing things, it would be one thing. But it just doesn't seem like that's the case. And you've been together for six years already. Like, you you both knew from the start that you were incompatible in this basic way like I just think or why continue to keep digging this hole I know you might feel like well we spent six years together we have to keep going you really don't you really don't have to keep going and it doesn't sound like you have kids it doesn't sound like you own property together it doesn't sound like you have things that would tie you together in a way that would be difficult to you know, pull yourselves apart. So I really, really think that in all honesty, the best thing you can do is break up because you just are not compatible. You are going to be able to find someone who is interested in doing all these things with you. I don't really get what he's saying. And I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by, you know, he, he conceives of these kink opportunities only with his friends and not with the woman he loves. Maybe that's how he does things. And you know what? That's fine. But that's still clearly not what you want. So why keep this going? It's just going to torture you both even as much as you're in love or you might care for one another if you do really care for one another then pick a situation that will bring you both the most happiness which is honestly you guys not being together as, as shitty as that sounds and I'm really really sorry because I do wish that there was a way I could see you to save this relationship but I just feel like you're at a base level incompatible and unfortunately sometimes the best thing you can do is break up and that's the healthiest and most desirable and the solution that will bring you both the mo most amount of happiness is breaking up so that's kind of what I advise there's another thing here that I really really want to talk about so you are going to get a tattoo on your thigh and you really like the tattooer uh, or tattooist when you are with a tattooer or tattooist sorry you both have to be together for at least an hour if not longer on both sides, I would really advise people not to do anything that would make that other person feel awkward. Because the thing of it is that once the tattoo is started, unless you know you want to get it finished by another tattoo artist it's going to be pretty difficult for you or that tattoo artist to walk away if they're uncomfortable about something I don't know if you know for sure if this tattoo artist is interested in you or not you may have already planned this but I would really really advise you either say before the tattoo artist starts the tattoo or after the tattoo artist is finished rather than in the middle because it's not really fair if that tattoo artist has absolutely no interest in you and you express interest while the tattoo is going it's going to make it really really awkward for them to finish the tattoo and if they feel uncomfortable enough they may just stop doing your tattoo and tell you to get it finished by someone else if they feel awkward enough and it's just not really like advisable in a situation where you know like if you have someone who's a waiter if you find them attractive like you know you're allowed to find other people attractive but if someone is kind of in a position where they're forced to be nice to you or kind of forced to be around you because it's their job you really really don't want to do anything that would make them feel uncomfortable especially when it's gonna like 
put them at conflicts with them having to earn a living versus them being nice to you. It's just not cool to do. And I, I don't know, like, I'm not assuming that you're going to be creepy or anything. I'm just trying to address that because having been someone who has been tattooed and knowing quite a few tattoo artists and hearing quite a few really terrible client experiences from tattoo artists, if you find your tattoo artist attractive, that's fine. But I would just honestly advise you to wait until the tattoo is done with. <laughs> to actually uh, tell them so just because you just absolutely want to make sure that they don't feel uncomfortable because it's not wise for you either if you're getting something permanently drawn on your body the last thing you want to do is make the person who's drawing it feel distracted or you know even if they do like you back like honestly just don't distract the person who's going to draw something that's going to be on your body for the rest of your life generally good life advice there again not saying that that's what you plan to do but just wanted to put that out there for you and for anyone else who's listening who might be attracted to a tattoo artist wait till your tattoo is done and then tell them that you're into them wait till it's done completely <laughs> and then tell them that you're into them if, if that's what you want to do yeah, to sum up my advice, I'm really sorry. I wish that there was, even though maybe a don't ask, don't tell situation might work, I really, really think that, you know, you're, you've been together for six years, you're 30 years old, you can find someone else who is more suited to what you want, and equally, your partner can find someone else who is also suited to what they want. It's, it's not worth continuing to hurt each other. If you really do love each other and care for each other, sometimes the best thing you can do, honestly, is just to end the relationship as unfortunate and not great as that sounds I do unfortunately think that's the best option in this case just find someone who who really wants you to have all these opportunities and who wants to do threesomes with you or who just will allow you to to go out and do what it is that you want to do and equally he can find someone who shares his perspective on things and who is monogamous and you know you'll both be happier in the long run it's just not worth it it's you know life is short it's not worth spending years and years and years on a relationship where you're both at a base level incompatible so yeah I, i'm sorry <laughs> i really hope that helps and good luck cool you've been listening to the non-monogamy help podcast once again check us out at medium.com forward slash non hyphen monogamy uh, hyphen help subscribe to the newsletter at tinynewsletter.com forward slash non monogamy help become a patron at patreon.com forward slash lola phoenix and follow us on twitter at twitter.com forward slash non monogamy help and so all of the patrons who have been a patron for over a year or who have donated five dollars or more their names are going to be read at the end of the podcast because they're awesome and thus far the patrons who have donated five dollars or more a month or who have supported for a year are laura boylan chris albury jones lena franzi and james wartell if you haven't heard your name called this month or this podcast sorry then it's either because you haven't told me for sure that you're cool with it or i've recorded this too early and therefore your name will be on next week's next week's episode lord so yeah thank you so much for listening and if oh yeah if you want to send a letter in please do nonmonogamyhelp at gmail.com and it will be anonymous and you can tell me if you want to be in the column or the podcast if you have a specific inclination otherwise thank you so much for listening and you will hear from me next after next week but do read the column next week cool thank you goodbye You've been listening to Non-Monogamy Help. Our podcast music has been provided by Chris Albury Jones at albury-jones.com. And the art was made by Dom Jung at d-o-m-d-u-o-n-g.com. Thank you for listening.